welcome. This is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme seven, element five, health issues in LICs. Please take your seats. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Health issues are arguably one of the best indicators of social development, but they also represent a real struggle to achieve in LICs for a range of different reasons. There are quite a few different health issues that we could look at in terms of social development, but we're gonna focus on two today. The first one is HIV. So HIV, which stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, is a disease that attacks the body's immune system. In effect, it weakens the immune system. Now, over 70% of the people that have HIV are people living in Africa. And the infection rates are higher in the urban areas where there are more people. So this can lead to a spiral of poverty, unemployment, and then that creates an even bigger spiral of lack of health, and then eventually death. So HIV ends up with people not being able to work because their immune system becomes weaker, they become more susceptible to minor ailments, and therefore they are more at risk from severe illness and death. When people can't work because they've got an illness like HIV, then it often leads to a deficit in the income for the family. And we're talking about an LIC where the income is probably going to be very rare in the first place. So children, as we've discussed in last lesson, have to pick up some of that and start working themselves to bring in an extra income. But when this is hitting a substantial proportion of the population of the working age, then it becomes a significant problem for the country because they're lacking workers. There are retroviral drugs. Now, there, are no, there is no cure to HIV, uh, HIV, but there are retroviral drugs which will limit the progress and in some cases stop the progress of the disease. But retrovirals are expensive. They're not easy to come by in some countries as well, particularly if you live out in the rural areas. So, as is the case in some LICs in, uh, in Africa, a lot of people are dying from this disease because they can't get access to efficient medical treatment. If it's left untreated, it becomes something called AIDS, which is Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. In effect, if you develop AIDS, which you get from HIV, HIV is weakening the immune system. AIDS is when the immune system has completely collapsed. It's a failure of the immune system, which means that even if, even if you get something as simple as a cold, it can spell life-changing issues or even death. The second one we're going to look at is malaria. Now malaria is most present around the tropical regions because the mosquito where malaria is by, passed on from live in warm tropical moist climates. They need a lot of water or some water in order to reproduce. So malaria is a disease that's passed on via the mosquito. When it bites or starts sucking out the blood, it passes on the pathogen into the bloodstream, which is part of the life cycle of this virus, this parasite, which essentially uses the body as part of its reproductive cycle. The infection rates are highest near water sources because mosquitoes spawn in, uh, in still water. So that's going to be near lakes, and you're going to get lakes in large bodies of water near enough in the rural areas. Malaria presents a significant risk to pregnant women and children who can't fend off the uh, parasite as easily. Rural areas don't have as easy access to the healthcare and uh, providers and doctors. Malaria is fatal, but there are very simple ways to stop it in the first place. There are treatments you can take, drugs, to prevent the, the parasite from taking hold. But even more simple is things like sleeping in a, a mosquito net at night. So then they can't get to you in the first place. Or ensuring that there are no buckets of water or pools of water left standing. Because of the fact that they're in the LIC, it's very hard for these things. Even a simple net that might cost between £3 and £10 might be out of the wage limit for some people in these countries. 
So the impact that this can have, if we look at infant mortality rate, HIV and malaria do present a significant risk to unborn children and very young children. So you can catch HIV uh, through the womb. It's less common in HICs because there are drugs that you can take to limit the exposure and so it's not really an issue in HICs. But in LICs, uh, transmission via pregnancy is still a, a risk as well as malaria. But assuming that a child is born healthy, having HIV or being at risk from malaria does present significant impacts on your health, so you've got a poor, uh, poor health and more likely to die from other minor ailments. And this can be even further exacerbated by medical staff not having the knowledge or the training they require to support people. Again, if we look at the international responses, there are a few things that have been taking place. So there's been a lot of investment in medical care in hospitals from both governments and charities for HIV and malaria. There are health campaigns from charities and governments around the world focusing on HIV and malaria. The HIV one tends to happen more in LICs now, but um, 10, 15 years ago, you would have still seen HIV adverts on the TV in the UK as well. Free condoms for HIV and mosquito nets being provided for malaria, but the distribution of this does pose significant problems if you're talking about the rural areas. And then there are two programs. So the UN's AIDS Fast Track program, which was designed by the UN to advertise and educate and fund uh, schemes around HIV. And then the UN's Rollback Malaria Programme, which was about governing an entire world's response to malaria, but it also included education and funding to make sure that the necessary resources were provided to those most at risk. Well, that brings an end to our lessons on Theme 7, but you can continue your learning by completing the Try It Now tasks Class dismissed.